Okay, so step seven, my throwing process. These are just kind of the things that I go through on a daily basis um, that help me uh, get to where I want to be and the way my throwing feels. So I'll start, after all I do on my warm up, I'll long toss either with a starting pitcher or with one of the position players, depending on what I'm doing that day. And while I'm doing that, I have several personal throwing focal points. First one is feeling connection and synced up. Okay, a lot of your guys, even though they can't explain to you why they don't feel, they don't feel connected or synced up, they can feel when they're out of sync, right? Your guys have thrown enough at this point where they can feel whenever it just doesn't quite feel right, all right? Next one, simple tempo, rhythm, on, timing, on time, and smoothness. So this is just going a little bit off of connection, making sure all the body parts are working in sequence, everything. Um, like some of the presenters have talked about, hands and feet moving at the same time, getting everything to work together and get everything from the ground up to work in unison. Next one, feet, my feet being light, active, plugged in and stable. So for me, um, a big emphasis on all of my things, not just hitting or throwing, is my feet being stable. All right, so if our base is unstable, then the rest of it is gonna fall apart, right? So it goes back to what Wes was talking about with your glute. If you don't load the glute and get your glute being stable to rotate, you're not gonna be able to efficiently rotate. So for me, a lot of it's my front foot. I get my front foot to kind of roll like this sometimes. So if I ever feel that, the whole goal is just stay stable on that front foot, keep it plugged in, until I rotated and connected as long as I can. Next, transition takeaway. This is just when I'm playing catch, just working on transitions, making sure we're getting everything to flip here, right? Um, and also another one, a big one for guys is sometimes you get the guy who takes the ball like this, takes the ball away from him like this, and it kind of gets hard to catch up. So for me, a lot of times, I'll just think about taking a neutral takeaway where my thumb will be up, which will just ensure that my body can work the easiest way. And in severe cases, you can do palm up as well, where it's just like, right? But we want to we wanna stay away from getting this negative takeaway, this pronated takeaway, to where we get like this, because then we get this. The early, we can, it can lead to the early external rotation that, that Wes was talking about. Step seven, my throwing process. These are some drills I go through on a daily basis. The ones bolded, martial ones, torques, step behind with arm swings. Those are kind of my go-tos. Uh, being a position player, your legs are important, but the lower half drills are not as important as you guys, right? So uh, if you look at a lot of infielders, they don't get into a, a roll this Chapman glute load because they don't need it. It's just gonna be all about here, but their butt's still gonna be behind their heel, they're gonna be connected and they're gonna go through their throw. So for me, marshals, torques, and step down with arm swings. All right, since nobody's done it a whole lot yet, I'm gonna go a little bit over connection and what it looks like. All right, so um, I put up JT Romuto, Manny Machado, and a roll this Chapman just so we can see that it's not just a pitcher or a position player thing. This is a thrower thing in general. Okay, so uh, the biggest one, the first one we have is forearm fly out, which is this, the ball to elbow to shoulder relationship. We want it to be inside 90 degrees. A lot of our healthy elite throwers are gonna be in this inside 90 degrees. We're also known as this uh, packed humerus with this uh, elbow below this shoulder, okay? An analogy we use at the, a lot of times at the ranch is if you're gonna hold a kettlebell, if we give you a kettlebell, would you hold it here or would you hold it up here if you had to hold it for as long as you possibly could? You're gonna hold it here, okay? Because this is your strongest position. So why, why would we teach kids to throw from a weak position when we can try to get them in this strong position to go forward? All right, same thing. So if you look at a roll, this you have ball inside elbow, elbow below the shoulder, got this good uh, inside 90, elbow below shoulder. Manny, it's hard to see it, but elbows below shoulder and the hands inside the elbow. All right, then you look at the glove side. All three of them do it slightly different. There's no right way to do anything. This goes back to the one size fits all, okay? One size does not fit all, sorry. So if you look at this glove side, you've got Real Muto who's kind of got it like this, but it's still in this good connected position where it's not loose or it's not kind of straightened out. It's in this good tight connected position. Then you go to Machado. Machado's got it kind of more down here. You see this a lot with a lot of the elite throwing catchers, right? Because the you're trying to get that good carry, so like Yachty is a big one. His glove side's down here, but as he goes to work, it firms up out in front of him, okay? And then Aroldis, same thing, just this nice firm glove side out in front right here, okay? And I believe Flint is gonna be talking about the disconnections, but if you have disconnections early in the delivery, similar to cross the chromial line, which is your hand getting behind here, 
inverted W, which is your elbow getting above your shoulder. Elevated distal humerus, which is your elbow getting above the shoulder the other way. It's going to be very difficult to get to these good connected positions. Okay? And this isn't something that just started today. You got Nolan Ryan. Like Wes was talking about, if you want to figure out how to throw, go back to the legend, right? So we go back to Nolan Ryan here. Good connected position. And I left the lower half in here because you can look at the lower half. You got internal rotation. or You got the internal rotation of both of them feeding into each other and going. Then you got one of the, arguably one of the best pitchers in the game right now. Scherzer are doing the same thing. Ball inside of elbow, elbow below shoulder. Nice, good glove side. Roger Clemens, ball inside elbow, elbow below shoulder. So the way we address these is with the connection ball. We have the connection ball in three different positions. Connection one, between your forearm and your bicep. This uh, helps with keeping your elbow, in, your arm inside 90 degrees and also limiting forearm flyout. Position number two is between uh, the, your tricep and your lat, squeeze down. This is really good with a chromial line, because if you keep it in here, the guy's not gonna take his hand back. Uh, elevate distal humerus, because it keeps this a packed humerus position, and also inverted W, because it does not allow the guy to get like this. It keeps him here, good packed position. And also the third one, glove side. All right, so we either take the connection ball and we squeeze it in our glove side, forcing the guy to uh, stabilize his shoulder and his, his glove side scap and turn into it. Second, we put it in between your forearm and your bicep on your glove side, squeeze it here, uh, kind of similar to, if we go back, like real Muto, right in here, that's how, that would be his probably ideal one. And then also we have um, one we don't use quite as much, but it's between the uh, tricep and the lat, which is like this way. Um, so you get that kind of squeeze, which still, if you feel, if you pull that down, you feel the lat turn on and the scap turn on as well. So we'll just run through connection ball real quick. Uh, the goal with the position number one is to get it to fly straight. If we get it to fly into the right, we got a forearm fly out. If we can get it to fly straight, we get this thing to connect, get that late ex or the later external rotation, and get it to go forward. With number two, we want this thing to fall out as soon as we start to turn. Okay? A lot of your guys, when they first do it, if you give them connection ball two, they'll try to lift their arm or they'll try to carry it with them like that. Okay, we don't want either of those. The uh, position two is a timing thing. So it's like here, and as we go to rotate, as we rotate the chest and the arm will bring this other arm up in a direction rotation, and then you go forward, and then the glove ball in the three position, it just stays there the whole time. So I think I'm about to do the three position. No, I still got one more of the two. So the ball just falls straight down. And then this will be the three position, which we just hold in our glove side, nice and firm out in front, firm out in front. And then as we rotate, it'll turn with us.